Every day we get asked the question, what is the best vintage motorcycle to put back on the road today? For us, that answer is simple. Hundreds of motorcycles right here inside Wheels Through Time Museum. And you guys know, we keep each and every bike in running and operating condition. The thing is, some of these bikes, they're just not suitable for modern roads. They're destined to stay inside and on display here at the museum. Now, other bikes are made to burn up the road. There's no question the Harley David it's a knucklehead remains one of the most capable and reliable vintage motorcycles period. Now this 1937 Harley knucklehead was hand built right here in the restoration shop and this bike was restored to run down the road. Tons of time, effort, and love went into making this bike what it is today. Uh, incredibly proud of the motorcycle and that's the reason we chose this motorcycle to be our 2023 annual raffle bike. It's all based around the power plant right here, Harley's famous knucklehead engine. In 1936, Harley debuted their overhead valve twin, full on circulating oil system, all new engine that would literally change the face of motorcycling altogether. Now this is a second year example, it's 61 cubic inches, it's a thousand cc's, tons of displacement to get out and run down the road today incredibly modern linker carburetor for its era now this engine it's a single cam it works almost exactly like the engines right up through i think 1998 all the way pan head shovel head evolution the knucklehead is not that much different overhead valves hemispherical combustion chamber about seven and a half to one compression these things crank out a ton of power uh, incredibly fun to ride and when you get one that's well built like we try to do them here at wheels through time these things are very reliable uh, run down the road for thousands and thousands of miles so uh, the power plant the knucklehead it's one of all of our favorites here at the museum legendary status in the American motorcycle world. Now, one of the next things that makes this bike so capable is that four-speed transmission. Same year in 1936 that they debuted the new power plant, Harley comes out with an all-new four-speed transmission. Now, prior to that, Harley had been working on the same three-speed transmission since like 1915, okay? In 36, they come out with that four-speed constant mesh all new setup and Harley actually used this transmission, almost the same transmission all the way through 1984. So incredibly positive shift, uh, upwards, downwards, the early sliding gear transmissions, incredibly limited when it came to shifting. These things go into gear like butter, four speeds, uh, gives you a lot better separation uh, between the gears. So the four speed transmission, again, a well-built four speed, these things will absolutely run forever. So the chassis, guys, one of the things that makes that knucklehead chassis so special is the new cradle double down tube frame. So right up here, you see the twin down tubes in 1936 and back. Harley was operating on pretty much the same chassis that they'd been on since the beginning single down tube limited strength with this new power plant you know some of these things the guys they were building the hot rod knuckles back in the day 50 and 60 horsepower that's a huge jump from the teens uh 15 18 20 horsepower so when you get to that knucklehead engine they really start cranking out the power so harley wrapped the drive line in this new super beefy frame so you got larger diameter tubing all around cradle frame two down tubes ultra sturdy uh, engine cradle and transmission cradle the 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 twin down tube frame harley davidson ran straight up through modern times guys so very very tough setup. The spring fork, believe it or not, those spring forks ride so incredibly good. And for those of us that ride bikes, you know, I got a brand new Harley Pan America. I rarely ride it because I ride my knucklehead. So uh, that spring fork, incredibly positive action, uh, operates very well, running down the road today. It's perfectly adequate uh, for the bumps and conditions of what we see on the roads today. 50, 60, 80, 90 miles an hour, the thing operates flawlessly. So up top, you've got the 120 mile an hour Speedo and you've got an oil pressure gauge and an amp gauge. So you always know when the bike's charging, you know that you got oil pressure. Uh, some of the other things that we did with this bike to make it more rideable, the Flanders handlebars. So 
in the 1930s, I want to say late 1930s, the Flanders company started making accessory handlebars with rubber mounted risers. It's one of the common choices for guys that actually put miles on their motorcycles. So uh, the thing about the Flanders adjustable uh, forward and then you can also roll the bars. So finding the perfect spot for your build and the way you ride the motorcycle becomes that much easier. The stock Harley Davidson handlebars, you're fixed into a standard bend. They are where they are. With the Flanders bars, you've got all sorts of options to make the bike your own. So operate just like Harley Davidson standard controls. So throttle on the right, spark advance on the left, and uh, incredibly comfortable and that rubber really dampens the ride. Now, when we restored the bike in the restoration shop, deciding on the look and finish of the machine was absolutely critical. Uh, this year, we built the bike as a bobber. So rather than go with the full fenders look where things are hanging off, you've got trim pieces that fall off running down the road if you don't stay on top of things, the bobber's kind of more of that strip down uh, hammer down the miles feel. So simplicity was really key with this bike because we want the winner to put on the miles. So uh, without further ado, we're gonna take this thing out on the road. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to ride and show you how fun it is to ride, guys. So let's fire this thing up. Easy starter. That thing warm up for a minute. Now, we run the six volt charging system on everything, but you can convert these bikes to 12 volt, 12 volt ignition, 12 volt headlights, and uh, makes everything considerably brighter. So, uh, six volts good enough for me though. And that may be fair. Knucklehead. 